Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Midnight tonight from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, out to the uh, left coast of the United States, it's Larry Bubbles Brown in the over, over, always falling apart San Francisco. Yes, I guess. Although I hear uh, New York is having some trouble as well. Yeah, well, we're, we're having our problems are that uh, Texas and. Uh, the Florida have been sending us all their, re, re, what can I call, what do they call it, re, re, wretched refuse? Wretched refuse. <laughs> That's on the Statue of Liberty. That's on the Statue of Liberty. That's you're so goddamn right. Yes, absolutely. So uh, that we uh, was it wretched refuse. How can you call people wretched refuse and think you're writing something nice? I, I, all of a sudden, it just hit me. How wrong was that, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, I don't know the whole thing, but it sent us your wretched refuse, your teeming something. Uh, 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 teeming shores of, of whatever. So anyway, so they are, they're all here. And you know, I'm... I, you know, I mean, Marjorie was kind of like, gee, why don't they send them somewhere else? And I went, you know what you're sounding like? <laughs> you know, I mean, we should just find a way to have them here. You know, this is an, this city's got a lot of money. It's got big money people here. Why don't they do something? You know? Does it have the room? I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, we can have the room. Yeah, there are, there are, I can't remember how many millions of, of uh, apartments available in New York City because people are moving out you know but I mean we don't have we don't have the problem you have with people on the streets sleeping on the streets I mean we have some but we always had that you know but we don't have what you have how, how is yeah the, you I, don't you don't have the tents in uh, New York City or like that people on the street but uh out here, they just the city just tried to sue to stop that. It's uh, the Ninth Circuit. A judge ruled that uh, the people are allowed to stay on the street until you find a place for them to live. Uh, boy, that's a rough one. Yeah, that's a rough one. Uh, you know, I do feel that communities have a what can I call it? Not a desire. A uh, a responsibility to take care of these people, you know, um, and we can do it. I mean, you know, we are a, that is a city. You do have police departments, you have medical, you have all kinds of things. Put those things to work. Am I right or wrong? You know. Well, they got to do something. All those people just seem to be uh, they shrug their shoulders. It just gets worse and worse. So I don't know if anything is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, um, you know, I mean, it. It. I. I go outside now, and it's. Um, it, it's the city. I don't take. I go. I don't leave the apartment much. I really there's nothing out there for me. Plus, I'm. I'm a, as like I had my little accident and stuff. And it's a lot harder for me to walk for some reason. You know. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I have walking problems. Uh, and uh, uh, but I mean I see all these people out there and it's uh, it's not good you know and it's not going to get any better and we just had I can't remember how many kids from these refugees uh, they were put in the schools here you know uh, a couple of weeks ago and that's putting a great pressure on the city to mm -hmm. deal with the new students in these primary schools so i mean it, it goes on and on and on you know uh and uh 
You, but you've got a real problem there. I mean, that I remember I saw a, uh, uh, a what do you call it, a uh, uh, an interview with uh, the governor, Gavin Newsom, mm-hmm. and and they he they said to him, you know, if you decide to run for president, this is going to be a mark on your on your uh, uh, on your record. Excuse me, I'm not talking well today. I can't come up with the words. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if I got enough sleep last night. I don't know. I slept, but I don't know if I slept well. Okay. No, me. Well, I never sleep well. Anyway, um, and they said yeah, that would be a mark against you. And he said, hey, listen, you know, I accept it. I will take a full responsibility for it. And there are many mistakes we're making, and there are many good things we're doing. But, you know, I, uh, if, if you want to come after me for San Francisco... Come ahead, you know. I'm uh, I'm I'm guilty of that, you know. It's a very hard problem to solve. How do they perceive of, of Gavin Newsom in California? Is he considered a good governor? I well, he gets elected uh, by a pretty big margin, so I guess they do. Yeah, so he's he's a, he's considered okay. I mean, you like him? Uh, he's not my favorite guy, but uh, I would uh, I would. The problem, I think, is, like you said, they used to have most of the people on the street are they're either drug addicts or they're mentally ill. Mm-hmm. And they used to have hospitals and places they would put those people in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I've heard two stories. I don't know who's to blame. Uh, some people say, oh, Reagan, in the 60s, Reagan cut the funding for the hospital and they're putting in the street. And then other people say, no, no, Pat Brown uh, said it was a civil rights issue and he let them go so I, they're probably both guilty but actually it was reagan if i remember correctly okay. you know, that he was you know he was uh, not doing anything about he, he literally closed down the mental institutions you know the government mm-hmm. government run medical institutions and you had all these people out on the streets well how, how good is that going to be you know yeah and the drug problem may, has made it worse so uh I just remember in the 80s when I was doing your show out here, there were like, you'd see like maybe a dozen homeless people on the streets. <laughs> now it's thousands. Yeah, yep, you're absolutely right. So, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, what, what are you going to do? You know, I mean, I say you take what you got and you spend it on this problem and you throw it at this problem 100% because uh, it affects every San Franciscan. You know, it doesn't just affect the poor who have to live in those tents. It affects the the wealthy, you know, uh, and uh, it affects the middle class, too. So you got to do something about it. And they should start doing something about it, damn it. <laughs> There's so many stores that have closed down and Nordstrom's gone now. And Well, that's caused by a different problem. That was caused by robberies. That's a crime, yeah. Yeah, I mean, shoplifting was at an all-time high. It is here, too. I now go up to Rite Aid, which at one point I went to Rite Aid and there was nothing on the shelves. And I went over to the pharmacy and I said, why is there nothing on the shelves? And they said, it all got stolen. (laughs) And we haven't restocked it yet because they'll just come in and steal it again because somehow our mayor came up with the idea of, that they wouldn't prosecute simple shoplifting. Well, you know, then you're going to have rampant shoplifting. Yeah, same out here. So yeah. is, how is your mayor? He, he, well, our mayor sucks. He's the okay, worst. The t- Every time I see him on TV, he just keeps saying, I'm on a plant-based diet. And that's all he's saying. Yeah, that's basically him, Mr. Plant-Based <laughs> Diet. That and, oh, hey, I'm going to go to the... Uh, the uh, the opera opening, I'm going to go to this thing, I'm going to go to that. He loves the socialization of being the mayor, you know. So, I mean, he's horrible. But anyway, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we here in New York just have um, many of the similar problems you're having out there. But, but you don't we, have the people on the street. Well, we've always had them. No, they're in the subways. Oh, that's where they go. Okay, well, yeah, they have that here, too. There's so. also, uh, and I don't know where it is and where you have access to it, 
But you can go underground in New York City. You go down into the subways, and then you go below the subways, and there are these caverns. And there are people living down there. You know. Sounds like it'd be a great movie script. Yeah, well, that's I think that's what we refer to as our homeless shelter. <laughs> you know, whenever you have to point buildings here or do any kind of construction on the buildings, you have to put up what they call as a protection platform. So that if anything falls from above, it'll fall on the platform, not on the people below. So our building has one all the way around it, and it's been there for the better part of four years now. You know, we'd finally like it to leave there through doing the work on the building. And uh, I, it, it, what, it, what it attracts it is it attracts the homeless who love to move in couches and chairs and things like that to sit under the platform. Great. Uh, I, and I, yesterday I said to our, you know, to our uh, super, I said, uh, when are they going to get rid of this homeless shelter? Because that's what I call it. <laughs> you know, it's just, it's horrible. It's horrible. Well, there's a whole uh, group of people that live under the, uh, some of the hotels in the Strip in Las Vegas now. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean. So well, America is like, we're like a, I don't know, we're just so third world now. <laughs> Well, you know, some people are poor because they're poor, all right? Mm -hmm. They have, can't do anything about it. It's not that they don't want a job, but they don't qualify for jobs. And, um, I mean, like I told Marjorie, they said, all oh, these people are coming and they, and they don't, you know, they don't have jobs and whatever. And I said, wrong. All these people, you know, most of them, you know, they're proud South American families who want to have a job to take care of their family. And I said, they want the jobs, and, they, and they're going out and getting some of them here. But the only jobs that are going to be available to them are the ones that the uh, normal population doesn't want. But, you know, give them credit. They're willing to take those jobs, whatever the risk. Mm -hmm. You know? So. Well, those will, those will soon be taken by AI, so nobody will have a job. AI? <laughs> AI. I'm so sick of hearing about AI. From people who don't understand what AI is. And they don't realize that AI has been around for a long time. Every time Yeah, you, I just thought it was an extension of the internet and computers, isn't it? Well, anytime you get yourself a, a spam call on your phone, AI is doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, AI has been around for quite a while, and it's just all of a sudden somebody builds a program that if I say, uh, write a uh, biography of Larry Bubbles Brown, I can sit here and watch it write a biography of Larry Bubbles Brown because it goes onto the Internet and looks for all the material about you and then quickly puts together something that is, is your uh, biography. I did it for me, and it was about 50% wrong. You know, so it, it's not as amazing as you think it is but it is going to exist and it is going to be part of the landscape and it's something we have to live with you know is it going to it's not going to write screenplays it can write a screenplay but not a good one mm -hmm. because you got to realize ai does not have soul it doesn't have passion it doesn't have years of uh using that ability to create a great screenplay. So no, I don't think it's ever gonna it's ever gonna replace a normal writer. But it is going to in some situations where people don't want to pay a writer, replace them. And then what they're gonna get is mediocre stuff. More mediocre than what we have. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I should have done that. Uh, I sh should have done that here before we came on, if I knew we were going to talk about this. And I put in, write a biography of Larry Bubbles Brown. <laughs> I wouldn't want to hear it. Someone yeah. tried that a couple months ago. Like yeah, the same thing. It was like half the shit was wrong. So. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, even if you do AI, you've got to go back and correct it. You know, and that takes somebody with knowledge. So it's, it's, yeah, no. it's, you know, I don't know that it's going to take over the world. 
Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I don't think it. Uh, did you ever see a movie called uh, Colossus the Forbin Project? No. In which a computer takes over the world. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I think these things are possible, but not now. Not immediately. And, uh, you know, this idea we got to stop it now, well, that's like saying you want to stop progress. And, and the fact is, this is all part of progress. Let me ask you, did, by the way, did you get your internet yet? Uh, yeah. You have it now. I have high-speed internet. And are you going on the internet now and using high-speed? I am yeah, just going, I, I get my email and I go right, uh, I look at, uh, I've been looking at YouTube a lot. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And it's, uh, boy, there's a lot of bad videos. <laughs> well, um, people, but like, the, I notice like it's, they don't know how to, they make them too long. They usually have some horrible music, background music that's overpowering. It's just, uh, and I'm not a filmmaker, but I thought, oh my God, these are horrible. Oh, well, you, you, I'm hooked on YouTube. Plus, you can go to YouTube now and see Larry Bubbles Brown. Uh, that way, I would not want to see. Well, but, you can uh, hear you can hear him on my shows on Fridays. <laughs> Just go to YouTube, look up Gabnet, and uh, you, you, there's a picture of you there on the shows that are, you're on. You're at the very wow. beginning. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, but I guess I have to send you a camera now, don't I? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm gonna send. Well, like well, I would be able to figure out how to work it. But I'll, work, I'll send you through it. It's very simple. Very simple. And then we hook up your camera, and then we get you Zoom, and then we talk to you. Doesn't Sounds that sound so complicated? And, and no, it's not. You know, the only thing that's easier about this is I do all the work. I call you. All you have to do is answer the phone. But I'm doing this on Skype. I should have just Skype, had you have Skype and be able to, you know, talk to you that way. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll figure later. it out. So you have high-speed Internet. Wow. And it, doesn't it seem faster? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, nice to be able to open some things up that I couldn't before. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I mean, it, 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 you just... And the other thing, and I had to get used to this. This was years ago. I mean, this is when I was still in San Francisco that I first got high-speed Internet, is the idea that you're always on the Internet. You, know, you don't ever sign into it by, you know, having that thing make that horrible sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you're always on. So any information you want or anything at a given notice, it, it's just you're there. You're on the Internet all the time. So uh, did they give you an email address or anything like that? No, I already had one. So. Yeah, well, but they came in and they gave you like what they call a modem, right? Yeah, that's uh, there's a modem and uh, they ran it through the... Uh, the cable that came through the wall and they hook that up I guess to the modem that gets hooked up to the computer yeah yeah and so you're now really speedy now how, how old is your computer uh let's see I had it, it was like completely rebuilt a couple of years ago so I think uh, I think it's fairly new I forget what version of Windows it is but yeah yeah it's not me <laughs> yeah well, what you might do is go online and go to zoom.com, Z-O-O-M.com, and get yourself a Zoom account. Now, you won't have to pay anything for it. All you can do is do 40 minutes uh, on Zoom, although if, if you call me, you can go forever, okay, because I have, I pay for a Zoom account every year, but you mm -hmm. don't pay for it. Get Zoom. And uh, that's one way we can communicate as well. That would probably be clearer than you using the telephone. Okay. But then again, you don't have a microphone on your... Do you have a microphone? 
I don't think there's one in that computer. Maybe. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, 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 after this is over, I will get your address, and I will go on Amazon, and I will buy you a not-too-expensive camera that you can hook up to that thing, and then we can start having you. I can call you, and we can have you download all the right stuff and so on and so forth. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Possibly. See, I don't he, know sounds, he sounds so excited, folks, doesn't yeah. he? So, uh, but you didn't see anything on YouTube that you liked? No, I'd say I did say there's like uh, there's a lot of old cars I like to look at. Um, mm -hmm. There's uh, old TV shows you can find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can find almost anything. Yeah. On YouTube now, I mean it, it's amazing. Uh, it's um, how do they? hold that much video <laughs> I guess there's what do they have like a zillion servers well, or something? Got, Just that's to... Amazon uh, wait a minute who wait a minute who, Google excuse me Google Google, Google owns uh, YouTube and they have their Google servers they have these massive massive server farms uh, you know various points in the country and that's where they store them they got enough space for all of that and I mean there are millions of YouTube videos literally yeah. millions yeah and uh, what what's some a, people actually make money putting things on YouTube? Oh yeah, I make a little bit of money, a little bit, a couple of hundred bucks every couple of months, you know. But uh, it it uh, the wonderful thing about YouTube is that you can get a YouTube account. You can then put videos up there. You can put hundreds of videos. You can put thousands of videos. You can put tens of thousands of videos, and they'll never charge you for it. Now, there are a lot of companies out there that will, but there's no need to do it because everybody goes to YouTube anyway to go look for stuff. Mm -hmm. So I, the fact that I've never paid a penny to YouTube for any of the stuff I have up there, and I have hundreds upon hundreds of videos over the years, maybe a thousand, something like that, they've never charged me a penny for it. So. And then you could get yourself a YouTube account, and you could do comedy from your living room. You could. Every person is now a uh, TV studio. Well, that's the problem, you know. Promise me that you've got the you've got the computer now, or you've got the uh, internet now. Do not do a podcast. No. There are just too many podcasts. I'm thinking of dropping mine, you know, because there's just too many podcasts. I forgot I read how many thousands start every day of a podcast, and most of them are, they quit within a week. Well, I mean, they say there are 30 million podcasts, something like that. Jesus. But, you know, some of them are just people who did one episode, and that's it. Yeah. You know? um, but, I mean, I, uh, I, I I keep thinking that, you know, there's just too much of it. You know, and, and radio, forget radio, it doesn't even exist anymore. Pretty much, yeah. You know, so, I mean, um, pretty much the uh, the idea, like, the idea of doing a, a, a radio-type show is a thing of the past. I mean, it, oh, yeah, you can do a podcast, but anybody can do a podcast. That's the problem, you know. Most people aren't talented enough to do a podcast. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> and what are the podcasts that are the most popular? Mystery podcasts. You know. Oh, somebody told me about all the uh, like unsolved crimes and things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's actually a good. Uh, that'd be interesting, maybe. Well, it might be interesting, but it's 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 too many of them. You know. So all you people out there, will you please murder more people? We need more podcasts. Well, who's the most uh, the most popular podcaster? Is, is it Joe Rogan? That's what they say. That's according to Joe Rogan. I don't know. You know, it might be. Who knows? You know. I think he, they said he's got 10 million viewers. At one time it was, uh, what was it? It was, uh, it was Mark Maron. 
he was like the first really big, big, big. Yeah, I and mean, I think he he still might be up there. He's still up there, but he's he's not the, he's not serious enough about it anymore. You know. Well, don't it, you run you run out of people to interview, don't you? <laughs> you're also doing movies now. You know, things like that. So, anyway, hey, listen, uh, we've run out of time here. We have with the new, but, uh, but we haven't run out of bandwidth. Whatever they that, right, you won't run out of bandwidth at all. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Okay, all righty. Okay, let me uh, get my mic up here. I'm having all kinds of little, I don't know, I just, I guess I've got the picture looking okay tonight. Man, it's just, it takes me a lot, it's a lot of work lately to do it, and I, um, I don't know what the problems are. I'm thinking of going to something simpler here. You know, I could just put this out over, uh, uh, go directly from Zoom out onto, uh, onto, uh, YouTube or onto Facebook. And not even have to worry about this, okay? So, anyway. Um, uh, how are you? I mean, let me turn on some air conditioner in here. It get, you know what it does? This room gets just... It, it, today's not a hot day. In fact, it's quite cold, quite cool. Um, but the problem that I'm facing here is that in this room, there are... Let's see, how many computers? One, two, three, four... Uh, is there a fifth one somewhere? I can't remember. But anyway, at least four computers here, okay? Plus one, two, three, four, five uh, screens. And, oh, the, yeah, there's a sixth, uh, fifth, uh, fifth computer. Okay, it's down here. One, two, three, four. Well, I don't know. Anyway, we, it got a lot of them. And it's, the, uh, it's mostly the... Um, these screens and uh, the machines that are heating up the room and getting the room hot. So even when the room is cold, okay, it, it still um, uh, gets hot in here. So I have to turn on the air conditioner sometimes. When it gets to be winter, though, then it gets to be really, really cold, and I don't have to do anything. Anyway, so it, uh, it, it's, a, it's a, you know, Whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, but we do have a couple of people who are waiting to get on the show, so why don't we uh, go to them and uh, 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 admit them. And uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got... Uh, let's see here. We've got... Oh, hey, look. Tommy Amaguchi. Oh, boy. Uh, Josh Wheeler and uh, Jeffrey Stein and, of course, me. All right. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hello. Hello. You weren't here last night, were you? No. Where were you, Mom? Yep. Yeah. He 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 helps. He's a good son. He helps his mom out. You know, that's very nice of you. He's officially ninety years old. Really, really. Well, she's not that much older than I am. You got something to look forward to when you oh, turn 90. Oh, yeah. Is she in good shape? Pretty good. What do you mean pretty she's good? She's to lose her hearing, and she's getting real forgetful. And other than that, she drives. Uh-huh. And um, only during daylight, never on the freeway. So she uh, does. She still drives, huh? See, I think I'd still be driving if I, in fact, uh, had a car. But, I, you know, I mean, I don't have any reason to, you know? And um, I just, I keep thinking about, gee, should I have a car here in New York? And I go, I would never, I'd never use it. But who we, do, who we do have here tonight, someone we don't see very often, but when we do, we're very happy to have him here. Tom Yamaguchi. Hi, Tom. Hi. Oh. Uh, happy New Year. Yes, uh, Happy New Year. Everybody Everybody sends me uh, notes. Uh, Patrick Blazik sent me a note saying Happy New Year. And I guess the only one that doesn't celebrate New Year is me. So, but thank you, thank you so much for uh, 
You know, Marjorie was complaining today because she was saying, here, these Jewish holidays come along and we're never invited anywhere. And, that, and that's primarily because we don't have many friends in Manhattan. So uh, people are not gonna invite us to go all the way over to New Jersey, for instance. So she feels, but she feels left out. If somebody would just ask, that's all she cares about. So somebody next year, Jeff, call her up and invite us or something. Okay. You know, it will show I go through my son. Huh? I go through my son. You go through They do it on an email. They do it on an email. Yeah. Now, this is Rosh Hashanah, and it's also Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah is the new year. Happy New Year, everybody. And then Yom Kippur is the most depressing holiday ever invented. <laughs> it's just, you know, um, uh, it's, a, it's a day of atonement. You're supposed to atone for your sins. And uh, it's, just, it's, not a very, it's not very happy. The yeah. hardest part for me is not being able to eat all day long. <laughs> well, did you ever go along with that? You when did. I was a kid, yeah. Really? Really? I never, I, I figured, well, you know, I mean, if there's a God and he loves me, he wants me to eat. Right? Absolutely. He wants me to eat. I like that. No, I mean, you know. Yeah. yeah. God, God gave us this bounty of, of, uh, of, of food. And we, it's there to eat, I guess, right. unless you're on a diet, in which case, you know, it's a whole different story. So what you been up to, Tom? We haven't talked to you in a long time. Yeah, um, it was difficult for me to get on uh, because of the living situation that I was in. Um, but I've moved. Yeah, that is, a a different, house. that is a different background, isn't it? This is a different background. Uh, mm -hmm. We have, basically, we have two houses on our property. Uh, main house where I was staying, and then a cottage where we had a person staying here for several decades, and um, she finally and, moved out. Now, after so, several, years of, <laughs> several years of trying to get her to move out, and uh, we had the pandemic. But then she moved out uh, last month, and now I moved in. Oh, okay. Well, now this is—is is, is this a house your family owned? Well, the, well, I'm a part owner of this property you, since you, uh, you know since 1981. Oh, okay. So, so you, you bought it with somebody else. What's that? You bought it with somebody else. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. My ex-wife and best friends got together. We we bought the house, and you know. The wife and I divorced, and other people died. Other people moved out, you know. So oh, it was, uh, it's kind of the theme for Ro for uh, Rosh Hashanah, for Yom Kippur, uh, you know, people dying <laughs> and moving out, and you know, things yeah, like yeah. So anyway, so so now I'm I'm uh, in here, and I have also got my own internet service, so uh, I've got better better internet now. Oh yeah, really? So, okay, so, no, but you seem to you seem to yeah. act like you're out on a property that maybe is out in the country a little bit or something like that. No, oh, no, no, I'm still in West Berkeley. Oh, okay, all right. Well, then you yeah, have I'm still I, West Berkeley. It's, 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 it's like right next door to where I used to live. Yeah. <laughs> so. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, and hello, Kevin. How are you? Good evening. How are you? Yes, I let uh, Larry know about your offer, and his answer was, "No, I'll do it myself." Okay. <laughs> yeah, I figure that's probably what he would say because you know he probably doesn't want anybody coming over to his place. Yeah, yeah so, that's fine. So uh, well, yeah. we'll 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 get him on somehow. But he got his camera today. Finally, it took two times for uh, Amazon to kind of get to him, and he left a note outside and said, you know. Uh, just ring any doorbell, uh, they'll let you in, and then you can leave it in the lobby, and I have a picture of it in the lobby, so. That's, uh, there you go. That makes me feel good. But, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know what happened? I decided, I, I was hemming and hawing about this, because I got this thing from Fios, and it says, hey, do you want two gigabyte internet? 
about 30 bucks more a month and I figured eh, you know at the end of the show I have to upload stuff and download stuff and it, it uploads and downloads pretty fast but if I had two gigs it would be hella fast okay so I figure what the hell so I, I go onto the chat on Verizon and I said uh, if I if I sign up for this uh, can I quit at any time and move back to my one gig and they said they said yes so then I'm looking at this thing. Now, everything they sent me said one one nine one nineteen a month, okay, for this service. And you get this, and you get that, and you get this, and you get that. And then I get another one, and it says, you know, hey, do you want it? It's great. It's terrific. So when I finally went to sign up for it, and they said, here's the one you're, that you're, you're thinking of buying, right? And it says 119 bucks, and I say, that's terrific, that's wonderful. And then right below it, it says one-time sign-up fee, $149. Holy shit. <laughs> and I went, what the hell is that about? You know, they're telling me, hey, get this, get... And none of the advertising, none of the, none of the brochures and stuff they had did it. It only did it at the last moment when you mm -hmm. would be signing up for it, and it was in very small letters, so you probably wouldn't even see it. <laughs> what kind of a absolute shit show is Verizon? Sounds like Walmart. Like, how does it <laughs> sound like Walmart? Because I bought a, a, a refurbished iPhone to play games on. It's two years old and it says like new, 12 months warranty. I get the phone mm -hmm. and it works. It's in great condition. Um, but the battery is fairly low. It's like 80% and usually you start replacing the battery at that point. So I called them and Amazon said, here's the, the uh, seller's number. I called them. Oh, it's only got a 90 day warranty. Yes, well, unfortunately for you, on Amazon's website, it says one year, and I've printed that out before I bought it. So you or Amazon is going to pay for a new battery. Mm -hmm. And that was today. We'll see what they say. What well, yeah. can Amazon? Does Amazon know how to tell you to go screw yourself? No, uh, they'll give me my money back. I'm sure. Keep the phone. Take your money back. Well, you know, I mean, I. But I. What kind of, what kind of, lousy operation, does that? I mean. Nowhere in any of the way, places where you're looking at it and it says what it has and how much money it costs and it says no right. addition, what no additional charges, right, right. And finally, and when you're you get already to the, a customer, there's two, right? Yeah, and so yeah, I get that's, I get that's, to that's, I get to the last page, you know, where you're finishing off and it says 119 dollars and I go fine and right well it just in small letters really I mean if I if I didn't uh, I, I I don't need glasses for that size print but it was pretty close what's the idea of doing it that way you know and you don't want to call them but I'll bet you if you called them and told them you know <coughs> I'm a longtime customer I did the chat customer. I did the chat with them and I mm -hmm. said, is there any way that I can get the fee waived? And they checked and they said no. Hmm. Well, then you say, I guess you don't get anything. Well, I told them, take, you know, take your two gig and shove it, you know. Yeah. I yeah. mean, if I needed it desperately, I'd probably wind up paying the 149 just to have it. But I don't need it that badly. So, you know, it was just something I was thinking of doing. Um but that's the you know that's the problem so uh and uh i'm trying to think is there anything else that uh is anything happening today in the news that i haven't uh i mean it seems to be the same news every day you know well they're uh, talking about uh, a possible gag order for for trump uh. um, you know um what's his name the the, the prosecutor uh, wants the, the uh, Washington judge to uh, restrain him from making any any comments, any more comments about the, the uh, about the case, which will be interesting. Uh, Find a pretty big cork for that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, Kristen Welker, who's now the new hostess of uh, 
or host, is that the proper way to put it instead of hostess, mm -hmm. of, uh, of uh, uh, Meet the Press, interviewed him. And they kept showing just parts of that interview over and over and over again. And he keeps referring to, uh, what's his name, the prosecutor in Washington and the prosecutor in the documents scandal as deranged. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. Well, why are they, why, I mean, why are they giving him a format on Meet the Press to come on there? Well, you want to hear, you, you want to hear. They the know not to be true. And the answer is because they have a new host and they want the first show to get a bunch of ratings. So for all they cry about him and moan and groan, they're going to turn around and make the premiere or whatever with him on there saying things that they know is not true, right? Well, you know what's interesting? They said, they finished off their interview, showing the interview, saying, by the way, we have offered Joe Biden equal time. And I'm thinking to myself, is, is Joe that. Biden his competitor right now? Right. No. <laughs> It's the people who are but, running against him in the Republican I mean, Party. They uh, should all be given the chance to reply. And I understand reply. that, you know, Meet the Press is a program where candidates for political office, especially the presidency, should be welcome and everything. And I get it, and I'm fine with that. But what I'm saying is, during the clips that I heard, is just stuff that's just not true. And he's not the same as everybody else, and he can't be treated the same as we would have did it 10, 15, 20 years ago. I mean... yeah. I heard him say over and over and over again, and I don't care because I have no preference on this, that all these electric cars are going to be made in China. And did I not get done talking to you guys privately last Saturday yeah. about the company that I happen to be at and the millions upon millions upon millions of dollars that my company is going to do just for our part of electric vehicles with one company, right? You right. know, that I'm not naming. But I'm just saying, I mean... That, that's just one part of it. Well, to begin no. with, to begin with, no. and somebody, somebody, somewhere, true. somebody, somewhere, corrected that and said that the mass amount of American electric cars mm -hmm. are made here. Yeah, right. They're not made yeah. in China. And, and I don't even have a preference. Like I'm not even pro electric car or anything, and I'm not even anti. I mean, I don't want one. I'm just saying, I hear that, and I'm thinking. It's not true. I, I literally well, was driving. I, I, I literally had just driven away from a place 30 seconds before where a good deal of the work that is going to be done supporting people who work in a union shop, by the way, making very good money is going to come from that industry. You know, so, I mean, and don't get me wrong, uh, he's not the first politician to say things that are, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. but is there a different level? And to put him on Meet the Press for their premiere is nothing but a stunt for a ratings grab to introduce their new host or whatever, and I, uh, shame on them. Yeah, yeah, shame on them. But That's shame on I, them because you know. she she didn't say to him, uh, the mass majority of electric cars are not being made in China, they're being made in the United States. She didn't even correct him on that. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I, I just, you know, the things they let him get away with in the name of ratings is amazing. <laughs> but then to say that you've offered Biden equal time, for what? Biden isn't running against he's Trump right president now. President of the United States. <laughs> yeah, he's he isn't running against Trump right now, and the who's running against Trump are all those other candidates. And I, but they weren't going to offer them all equal time because it'd be it'd be until November before they got them all on the air. And as yeah. much people won't watch it, and that's what they're interested in. Yeah. So they're going to decry his anti-democratic. He's so dangerous. Blah, blah, all of which I agree with, by the way. But they're going to chuck it all by the wayside for a few days to try to make some money. No, but, but you know what I keep saying to Marjorie? Because Marjorie watches MSNBC, which I just can't stand to watch anymore. Mm -hmm. There's only one person there, Katie Tour, who I happen to think is pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. But, I mean, I can't stand them because they mm -hmm. uh, are making the same mistake they made in 2016. Mm -hmm. They are, oh, every day they're talking about Trump. Yeah. Every yeah. hour of every day, there's Trump, Trump, Trump. Yeah. And, and, and it, now they're, they're just letting him repeat the same yeah. untrue phrases over and over and over I again. mean, if you would treat him the same as you treat, say, uh, oh, who are some of the Republicans who are running? You know, Chris Christie. Yeah. That'd be one thing. But you aren't. 
when's the last time you saw Chris Christie on MSNBC? Well, they have him on in the mornings now. Oh, oh really? Uh, yeah, a lot, because he fits in with their, you know, crusade. <laughs> well, I happen to like, I mean, you know, I happen to have but, gotten to the point where I've gotten to like Chris Christie, not because yeah. he has taken off after Trump, but because yeah. he's the only one of the pack who has the guts to do it. Yeah, you know? I mean, but you know, uh, I mean, they, they at least, I mean, they have him on, but they have at least, from what I've seen, tried to keep him in check as well, you know. They were talking to him about the rise in crime rates two or three days ago. And he was going on and on about this is what happens when you have George Soros prosecutors who don't prosecute and all that. And I will say at least Joe Scarborough said, hang on a minute. I'm pretty sure there's not a George Soros prosecutor in Birmingham, Alabama, where the crime rate <laughs> is the highest in the nation. <laughs> you know, yeah. so you got to be fair here. And then Chris Christie, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. You know, <laughs> you know, and then goes on with his spiel. So, I mean, he still tries to... to Put this bullshit. Well, he's out still there, a. But, he's every you know, inch a, a dyed-in-the-wool Republican. Yeah. You know, it's not like because he doesn't like Trump, he he isn't a Republican. As a matter of fact, if you are a good Republican, you probably don't like Trump. Yeah. And what so he's he done still to the had party. His bullshit. But yeah. I'm just saying, I didn't even know Trump was going to be on there. And I got in the car and I was driving home, and it was on that channel because it was on where I drove into work in the morning, and I normally just change it right away. But, you know, I was getting the windows rolled down, the whole thing or whatever, and I heard this minute's worth of, you know, the new host and the first interview, and I'm just like, that. I mean, that's, the first interview, if it had been with Biden, that would have been whatever, or, I don't know, or, or Chris Christie, or I would have taken whatever, but Trump, really? I mean, that that's just, I mean... It, I don't know. Yeah. I, they're just, they're selling themselves now. To use him to make ratings and money. Does anybody remember what the original format was of Meet the Press? Oh, I do. <laughs> go, go, go ahead. Yeah, Come on, like a half an hour. Yeah, ago. yeah. They used to. It used to be they 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 would have you know a politician come on and yeah. they had a panel of journalists. Right, like and each across. one it would be it was the press conference of the air. And they, right. each journalist would have an opportunity to to ask questions, like like in a regular press conference. Yeah, I believe. Well, I know. used to, I renamed it when they, when Tim Russert was there. Meet the Russert, because it was like him all the time, you know. Right. And, yeah. And, it, and, it, it, the focus became on the host. Yeah. Well, what happened back in the original version? Ma Martha Roundtree was the person who created the show and was the host of the show, and uh, she would then uh, bring on four people from the press uh, and then they would ask the questions of one person who was a guest on the show for that week I think it was only a half hour show at that time mm -hmm. and, and now it's nothing like that oh. yeah. so. but they're having yeah, tr I meet mean, the press yeah. what? I don't mind the show I mean I sort of like it but um, I don't really watch it this time of year because on Sunday it, this time of year it's all football all the time so Whatever, but that's what I'm saying. They're up against that kind of stuff, and their way to to get a good start, hopefully, in their opinion, is to have Trump on. I mean, you know, I yeah. mean, it's like, you know, I didn't even, I thought they were finally starting to learn their lesson a little bit, you know. But shame on me for thinking. No, that. no, they're that's making true. the same mistake they made back right. in 2016. What do you yeah. think? Uh, since he's here today. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Tom, what do you think about that? I mean, do you think they're over promoting Trump? Oh yeah, always. But you know, that's that's the bind. I mean, you know, there, he's 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 a master at at at, uh, at uh, manipulating the media, you know, and uh, and they're the suckers. I, they're the suckers. Yeah, yeah. And and I admit that uh, in 2016, I I misunderstood. I didn't estimate how the, the much power he had, and uh, not going to mis underestimate uh, underestimate him it, eh, underestimate him again, mm -hmm. because uh, he's a real serious threat. We really need to uh, make sure that uh, that people are aware that uh, if he gets in again, our democracy is gone. It's just basically gone. I I, I would tend to agree with you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, um, and I, you know, I don't 
completely understand Trump uh, oh. from this standpoint. Uh, what? Why is he the way he is? I mean, he doesn't have any politics. It's not like he believes in anything. So what's what's his, what's his game? What does he want out of all of this? The power? power. Huh? Yes, he wants power, and he and he wants people to adore him, and he's gotten that. I mean, he's he's got uh, you know people. He's he's basically hijacked the Republican Party because you know he's he's giving the. Re- Republican Party what they want, mm-hmm. or and, the, and who's the, who's led what's him? What's left of the Republican Party? They, they he's giving them what they want, he, you know. So they're just going to continue to 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 be on his bandwagon. Well, who who led him hijack the party? It was the party? Hmm. Party Stick did nothing to stop him. They were afraid of him. They're yeah. afraid that his his voters won't like them. Hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. and I. I just think they're 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 worried about something that just isn't true. If they just wouldn't pay attention to Trump, play their own game, and say what they believe truly, and they even criticize him from time to time, I think they would find themselves uh, in pretty good company. But everybody's afraid to do anything about it. There's no one's no one's ready to go after Trump, and that's the problem. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I can't wait to see what he does with the media if he loses the primary. <laughs> well, he would have to lose a lot of primaries. Well, and, but he yeah. wouldn't get the nod, and somebody else would. And Actually, if- he won't get the nod, but, and this is what I hate about primaries, is that uh, the, uh, the parties dictate that the state has to vote for the person who got the most votes in the primary right. on the mm-hmm. first ballot. After that, it's anybody's game. Am I right, Josh? Yeah. For the, I'm sorry. The, the, that the, after the, the first the, vote in in the at the convention, the primary votes get thrown out the window. Yeah. You can do anything you want to on the second vote. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, yeah, I'm not great with the convention activities you know past that because it's normally not that big a deal but yeah i'm pretty sure because i think that played out a little bit in 2016 in the democratic convention a little bit didn't it wasn't there some uh uh i didn't think, really i mean i don't, each, I don't each, remember having a nominee the first time maybe we did though i, I you know I, I can oh yeah Every time we come around these election cycles, it's always like, oh, we're going to have a broker convention. And then it just doesn't happen. They, yeah, they, 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 yeah. come, to a, they when, come to a nominee quite quickly. When I was yeah, a kid, drag for days or anything, when I was a kid, they had, bro- they, they, they had they brokered that. conventions when I was a kid. When I was a kid, it w- they, sometimes they would go for 20 votes before they came up with a candidate. You know? Uh, and they were going in the back rooms, and they were smoky rooms, and it was, you know, that's what they called them caucuses, actually. And, um, that's, uh, it, 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 you know, it was only until recent times that we really engaged in primaries as the primary form of getting a candidate. Before then, it was going in and fighting with people and making deals and bargaining and all of that. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, he's on his way to, to whatever. I, I don't know if there'll be any serious challenge mounted by then or not. I mean, my I, I observation can... tells me no, but, you know, that's my observation at this moment. I was it's thinking the other day about why people want, uh, want so much uh, to be a congressman or a senator because I see very few of them that I actually believe want to become a congressman or senator because they want to make the country better, right? Power. Uh, power. It's, it's all power. power. And I was thinking, maybe is there any way we can restructure our government so that nobody gets power? They, they get something else, they get some kind of satisfaction, but they don't get power. But they're all, I mean, why does Dianne Feinstein stay in there this long? Power, you know? Uh, why why is Trump acting the way he is? Power. 
it's all about power. And I think we have to take that power element out of politics and out of our government. But I don't know how we do it. And I don't know what would replace it. But uh, maybe we don't pay them or something. You know? Can I say something, Alex? Yeah. I don't, we need those positions to have power. It's, it's why you, you pick the leadership. It, it's the whole dynamic of, of you know steering the ship. But it's the narcissism that gets corrupted by the power. And, you know, like you just have to have a good freaking feel for it. But there are so many people out there, they're, they're, they, were, they were raised by someone who is an uh, uh, extreme narcissist or they're married to someone who's extreme narcissist. And, and there's a codependent relationship where you make excuses for those people. And that's what these Trump voters do. It's a very unhealthy um, relationship that this country has with narcissism. And, you know, that's really the answer because we need positions of power. But it's the narcissism that just makes it just, it makes the power just self-serving for them and no good for us. That's my hot take. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I bet, I mean, but well, how, do, how do we do away with some of that power, you know? I mean, it's just there's something wrong. Limit well, how long? I don't know that it needs to be done away with be I, I I just think the attitude or whatever may need to change because the power mm -hmm. ultimately does and always has you know reside in the people mm -hmm. I think we abdicated a lot you yeah. know in my opinion I, I just don't think that enough people participate and not very many people participate at a at a level that's good enough and you know we we choose these people now a lot of this what you're saying though is uh fair enough and you know if you were to go read just a, a a nice narrative on the the constitutional convention you'll see that a lot of the stuff that you just asked were all arguments that they threw around mm -hmm. you know i mean you know there were there were those guys at the convention that believed we shouldn't pay uh, people that it should just be something that you did mm -hmm. and then there was another contention that said no we should what we would really want in government is rich people because they won't want to get more rich they'll they're they'll be oh, serving yeah. the goodness sure. of their lives. Right. i mean yeah. that's what i'm saying you know <laughs> different time right no if, if you take a poor farmer and let him become a government official he'll be able to make money off of that and that will be his motivation for service his, his motivational service will be self-aggrandizement was a term they threw around a lot. It won't be for the good of the people. Um, some of it was very arrogant, very short-sighted, right? I mean, I'm not, you know, but trust me, they had, this is why it took months locked in a room to get, and then a year and a half of ratification, right? Mm -hmm. Because once, once they wrote it, then the people who voted on it had those same arguments, you know? So... It's fair enough. It's been, I guess what I'm saying is, is it's been asked and argued like that since the beginning of our democratic ways, our democratic experiment. And what's always settled it is that the power always comes back to the people. I mean, we can do anything. Yeah, but you know, there's that old saying that the not to. power corrupt. Uh, 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 corrupts uh, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely i don't disagree you know and i think that we give these people a little too much power i do too i mean you go and you watch a guy like uh, what's his name the guy in california is the speaker of the house uh, mm -hmm. McCarthy. mccarthy he's acting like an absolute douche you know, I mean, <laughs> absolute douche, and there's no reason for him to. If he were voting in the best interests of this of this nation, he wouldn't be doing what these secondhand Republicans, you know, who somehow have control of that part of our party, of, the, of their party. Um, uh, he, it, they just wouldn't have any power at all, but they do. And I think this word power is it's misplaced. I don't think that's really what what the problem is. You gotta have we have checks and balances and all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. It's really the caliber of the pe the people. Mm -hmm. We have to we have to have 
somebody steering the car when we drive down the road. We, ha- I mean, these positions, mm-hmm. you know, I, I don't see the power as the problem. It's 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 the it's the people, and we have a mental health crisis in this country. I mean, to to be to think that Trump, the, one of the greatest grifters of all time, is the only guy who can fl- fly your banner. There's a it's it's bonkers that he's ahead in the Republican race. And, you know, and it's it's buck stops with the voter mm-hmm. on this. If we had a better caliber person, we wouldn't be talking about power. But we it, we have we have like mentally ill people putting mentally ill people in in these positions. So it's you know, it's and I would go so far as to say a Trump voter is mentally ill. But th- there's something oh, there's I something think, they're not. I, saying. I, I think there's something. Yeah, definitely. but that's that's. Exactly what Go ahead. Josh was saying is it, it's if you use your analogy, it's the it's you know that puts that person behind the wheel, but who puts that person in the car? It's the people. Yeah. So it's still power from the people, and it 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 takes more people to get involved to get those people in the car to steer it. Do you and, think that? And if you get the right people in there. That narcissism may go away if you get the right people in them. So I understand your analogy with the narcissism, but I think you know if you can get rid, get the right people in there and get rid of the narcissism, the power would be there anyway, and it would be used correctly. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. We've, we, the people, we made the the judicial branch as powerful as it is today, right? Did we not? I mean, we gave them these decisions to make. If Congress had passed the law in 1970 with a federal law signed by the President of the United States in, you know, 1968, 1970, with all the same exact wordings that were in the Supreme Court's decision of Roe v. Wade, there never would have been a Roe v. Wade. There never would have been a decision here a year. That, it would just be the law. Mm-hmm. But we didn't pass a law in 1970 or 68 or 71 or 70. Instead, we waited... And then we asked the court, and then we did it again. Yeah. <laughs> After they did it, we waited fifty more years. If, and if we, we had did made it, it a law, there'd be nothing they could do about it, right? Ex- right. Except to reverse mm-hmm. it, but it would take a lot of work to reverse something Price is like much that. Work. But what I mean, you know, but see, they didn't reverse law; they reversed a ruling. You know, yeah. right. they would have had almost no basis to reverse a law. It was unfinished because business. It I mean, it would, it would have been a law. It would, it's just like a law that says if you make $100, you pay $10 in taxes on it. If you make $200, you pay 30 I mean, you know, it, it, it's a law. I mean, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Laws get, you know, but, but they have to be a constitutional basis. Mm-hmm. And they this court itself the said job. there's no constitutional basis. They thought there they finished the job, and they did There's a legal basis, but we didn't make a legal basis. No. No. You know? it's, it's like Social Security. That's a law, right? And it's a law that's very hard to change because the mm-hmm. people love that law. Yeah, and and so the Supreme Court isn't going to take Social Security away because there's no basis to ever get mm-hmm. a case to the Supreme Court saying that it's unconstitutional mm-hmm. because they're going to say, and every court below them, by the way, is going to say, no, Congress has the power of the purse. So, Social Security they made was, a they made a law that says this, that, and the other. Social Security was set up as a law right yeah not yeah, so it yeah. was a federal federal program a statute enacted yeah. by congress signed by the president so they're going to say the other two branches agreed on this those are the elected representatives of the people uh signed by the executive branch mm-hmm. we don't see anything unconstitutional here it didn't it didn't try to say uh you know enslave people or it wasn't a law that said um, you know, you can no longer use the word fuck more than once a day or any, I mean, you know, I mean, obvious constitutional roadblocks here. They're going to say they set up a spending program that said if you pay in, you get back. What's we got nothing here. Tom, it never would have gotten to the court. It never would have gotten out of the lowest courts. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. We gave them that power. Tom, Tom, you still take it back. What do you, what do you, what do you say? Uh, what do you say, Charlie? I said they should have done Roe v. Wade as a law. It never should have gone to court. It should have been 
It should have been a law passed that women have the right to control their own bodies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we can do that tomorrow, yeah. by the way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they if we want to the... hurry up and get Congress in session right now and, you know, mm-hmm. we could get it done before, you know, midnight. Now, they have the power. Tom, they need to use it correctly. Happen. Tom, you mm-hmm. were saying that you were very worried about the future of this country. Well, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Is it only Trump that bothers you or worries you? Or is it, well, ju- is it just the American? Basically, you know, basically Trump has tapped onto something, you know, that's beyond Trump. You know, I mean, he's, 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 he's found something that locks onto that, you know, as I said, he's, he's hijacked the Republican Party. So there's a lot of, you know, Trumpists. It's it, it, it's not Trump himself alone. It, it's 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 the fact that you know the the, the DeSantis's and the and and the Nikki Haley's and and whoever, they're just happy to 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 uh, to, to get on that train. And mm-hmm. uh, and when you go back to the the House of Representatives and and uh, and Kevin McCarthy, mm-hmm. you know he he's his speakership has been hijacked. Basically, he's. He's he's a non-speaker. He has no power, really. He can't get anything done. Uh, he has to uh, give in to the, the whims of the small number of of uh, you know well the Matt uh, Gates that, 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 that elected him the, and the Matt and, Gates and, and the Marjorie to, Taylor Greens yeah yeah he has to to do things uh, silly things like oh let's uh, let's do an impeachment inquiry on Biden. You know, yeah, but I don't. Like, I don't even think he. I don't think he. Don't to, I, don't I don't want it. I don't think he even wanted to do that because he knew the reality no. of it. Of it yeah. surviving. He doesn't have the votes. Yeah. He doesn't have but, the votes. But he did it to keep that that group of people mm-hmm. happy. But now he's right. he's getting a little bothered by them getting pushy. And today, he actually came out against them. He finally challenged them. And said, well, "Come ahead. If you're actually, going to do yeah. something about me, come ahead." Which yeah, I, I heard that yeah. last night. Yeah, yeah, and I said, "Maybe the guy has something below his waist." Well, then he should shut know. the entire <laughs> thing down. I don't know if he did that yet, but you know that that's that's my saying is, here you have, or at least maybe it's changed, but at least what looks like someone who was but he, 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 this is baloney, but is more interested in being Speaker of the House. Than they are doing the right thing for the nation as a whole. Well, the problem who the, elected it, this guy, the people. The problem is that he has no control over mm-hmm. his party, mm-hmm. and he, he does not have the control that Pelosi had over the Democratic Party in Congress. Uh, she she mm-hmm. ruled with an iron hand. He's ruling. He's not no, even. They gave ruling. her the respect that she earned. Yeah, she yeah. gave. Yes. They gave her the respect. No, she earned that. It was, oh, and, yeah. and and they respected her, and they were willing to work with her. It's well, a different situation. Believe me, she had to earn it harder than any guy would have to. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know, and and she, I think, did a great job. You know, I mean, uh, she she, uh, I think she knew the the way to do the job because her father was in politics too, mm-hmm. so she saw it growing up. So she grew up with it. You know, it was the family business, as it were. But um, uh, I don't know. I'm I, I'm worried. But you know, mm-hmm. then again, I go. Well, I'm 83. You know, how long am I going to be? <laughs> yeah. How long am I going to be know, around? It, it, Do I have to worry? You we're going to hear this there. from him 10 years from now. Yeah, I'm 93. How much longer do I got to? Believe worry? me, if I'm doing this show 10 years from now, <laughs> shoot me. Okay. <laughs> But, you know, with, with what you were saying earlier about your concerns and all that, I mean, I'm serious. If people are, are interested in that, I mean, there's a couple, three books I could recommend that are a narrative of the convention. They're probably, you know, 250 pages. I mean, not, not big old well, thick but, books. But let me ask you, you a question. You see that those same arguments were, yeah. were bantered about. But let me ask you a question. What has happened? You know, in the old days, uh, back when I was a youth, uh, going out and making trouble and being a left winger and marching in the streets and all of that, we were very active, you know, mm-hmm. and but we were also paranoid about everything. Oh, this is going to get us and that's going to get us and you know the FBI's doing this and the FBI's doing that. 
And now the paranoia is on the right. And it's yeah. the left that goes, everything's wonderful. Everything's okay. <laughs> you know? I've noticed that too, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, yeah. the kind of paranoia mm -hmm. we had back then about things yeah. is now the... The establishment, the, yeah. The purview of the, well, uh, uh, of the MAGA I mean, people. What I said before was, I think, you know, becoming more clear to me now that when the history books are written, the historians are, are going to consider 2016 what, what, what political scientists and historians call a realigning election, where, where everything that you thought was once moved itself around at one election cycle and no longer was the same. The paradigm totally changed. You, well, you know? well, look mm -hmm. who was president uh, b before that election. Mm -hmm. Obama. We had made a great paradigm shift yeah. with mm -hmm. Obama. I mean, a black president, okay? You know, uh, a just amazing paradigm shift. But, but and yet, you know uh, oh, the, 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 uh, then in t 2016, we get Trump. How do you go from one to the other? You, when you have backlash. realigning, it was a backlash. Yeah. You know, when, mm -hmm. you, when you have these realigning elections, yeah. you typically have an issue or two that transcend party membership and fracture the country enough that people are willing to do things that they normally didn't do. So to illustrate it, two examples of what historians would call realigning elections. One would be 1860 when Lincoln was elected and people who believed in certain things no longer did. We had a civil war. And another would be like 1968, where everything was about civil rights. Civil rights gets passed and Lyndon Johnson says Democrats have lost the South for a generation or five yeah. generations or whatever he said. And he was absolutely right, correct? Mm -hmm. Post, it was also post 1968, too. Alabama, Mississippi, Texas, Georgia, Florida, none of them voted for Democrats Tom, anymore. Tom, right? what, what were you saying? It was also Vietnam, too. Vietnam Correct. was a really... That was a very polar. Well, that's what I'm saying. There exactly. are usually one or two issues that yeah. transcend yeah. party membership. <clears throat> we have a huge election, president, most of the Senate, all of the House, It's all, and everything changes in an unexpected way, and then the path that the country was on diverges, mm. goes on a different path, and that path is nasty. Right? I mean, you know, post-68 was... It was Nasty led to, I mean, it led to crazy. Post 1860, nasty. Post 2016, nasty. Mm -hmm. It's been rough, right? I mean, yeah. now, now we have arguments over the silliest things. I mean, that the federal government honestly should not even, you know, and suddenly, uh, like I'm saying, Republicans for years and years and years, oh, the federal government has no right to tell your local school board how to run their school. And now all of a sudden they're very interested in telling yeah. your local school board, right? Mm -hmm. It's been realigned. Mm -hmm. Things that you once thought 20 years ago, 10 years ago, are completely flip-flopped in your mind. You know, I mean, that, that you know, and that's why I say when we go through these, these things, people cannot stand up and, and say... You know, well, that's not the Republican Party of 1860 or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. It's not because it's flip flopped about four or five times since then. And you need a flow chart to figure out exactly. what someone then would call themselves today. You know, because it's just not it's not a straight line. Nothing is you know? normal. An issue or two come along, and like Tom said, civil rights in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. I don't know that that was a party thing, right? I mean, that was just people. You know, I mean, plenty of good Democratic Union hardworking voters in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I'm just going to say it. They didn't like niggers, right? So they said, I'm not voting for that guy that wants it. I mean, I'm just, I mean, it, it craziness, you know, nonsensical type yeah. thinking that will not improve their life. Will not, <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, the things like bigotry go into it, racism. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just plain, and it all comes out. Stupidity. People yeah. aren't afraid to bring it out. Right, and you yeah. get the right timing and the right person, mm -hmm. and that's that's how you uh, <laughs> that's how you end up. I mean, part of my you know uh, appreciation for Lyndon Johnson was that he could see it, that, that he understood it, that he knew it, he could mm -hmm. see it, but he said it's still yeah. got to be done mm -hmm. anyway. 
you know, I mean, they made it into the movie with, with Brian Cranston, but I remember him giving that famous speech in, 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 I think it was in Texas, actually, where, where he said, you know, if we make this election about nigger, 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 that's all you're ever going to hear about for forever, and it's, it's not going to work. You know, and he finally got people to understand civil rights has got to get passed. It's coming, whether you like it or not, eventually. Mm-hmm. And if you make your stand, you're just it's just not going to work out for you. And, you know, I mean, now we can't get a politician brave enough to talk that way. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. so I, I think that that's what it's going to be considered, is it's just going to... Everything just changed. The whole modem in your mode in your modem, mind, modem. You know, it just <laughs> can't process what happened. You know, it's mm-hmm. like you look at this guy, and if you couldn't see him and you didn't know their name, they're saying things that if they had said it in 2010, you'd have been like a Democrat. And now yep. you look at the screen, and you're like, what? Republican from you know Oklahoma? What? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, you just you just can't mm-hmm. understand it. You know, right. I mean, that's what I think. Well, you know, I mean, we live in a we live in interesting times, as the old saying goes, mm-hmm. and uh, it's uh, it's not good. You know, it's not good. Uh, it's 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 just it, nothing. Not to begin with, the worst part about it is nothing gets done, and that's horrible. And were we not saying the same thing at those times? In what times? During those times that we were in this turmoil. Nothing was getting done then either. Well, I think there was more getting done in the name of nothing than is getting done now. You know, I mean, let's face it. When you can't get these jerks to decide that it's a good idea. I would say more so now probably. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that you can't get a bunch of people to vote for uh, a uh, um, uh, for a, for a spending bill, you know, let the government go into default. Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I, I do it, think it, what yeah. is different is you, you did not really have the willingness among politicians, for example, to say, oh, well, because I didn't get my way, we're going to shut the government down, or oh, because I don't like one of the policies that the military has, I'm going to place a hold on all promotions. Uh, and, and approvals of nominations for, for military leadership and totally up into military, you know, like Tommy Tuberville, right? I mean, you, you had people who had some integrity and said, there's a way to fight that, and I'm going to fight it that way. I'm not going to mm-hmm. throw a hissy fit like a baby, you know, because I didn't get my way. You know? <laughs> Which is going to be interesting to see how many people actually come out and vote in this next election, you know, and try and change mm-hmm. things. Because... It did happen in the last election. I know, Tom, you work the elections like I do. And there was a hell of a turnout this last, that last general election, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Will yeah. that continue in this next general election? That's going to depend on who's running. And, you know, will, it, depending on who's running, will that still bring more people out to actually make those decisions on who's going to be there? You know, I'm, that's that's going to be a big thing I'm, because I'm wondering how many people whoever's are gonna, on that ticket is going to is going to be, you know, what's going to happen the next four years. I'm wondering how many people are going to come out to vote against somebody rather than for somebody. And that's the other thing, yeah. you know. Now we get we have one other problem. I just wish people would come out and vote, yeah. you know, the statist- for a candidate. Yeah. The statistics lately are not good because to begin with most of the country on both sides don't like the candidate they're going to get. Okay. Either one of them. Yeah, either one of them. But the big problem with, with that we have with Biden is his age. Now, I can talk about it because at 83, I can talk about what age is all about. But Trump's going to be 80 when he's in the office. I know. So I mean, him hell? too. Him too. Why is that not but being I'm worried. About? I'm worried about this whole age issue because, quite frankly, we saw a young president in a Barack Obama. And mm-hmm. how refreshing was that? Nice. You know, the idea that presidents and politicians all have to be old. I think the prime time is like 50 years old. 
60, then up into 70, and then get out of the way and let the new people come in, you know? Eddie but Wilson, no, how you've got, look at, look at, look at Feinstein for crying out loud. I mean, what's that all about? You know, she, it's not like she was a spring chicken the last time she got elected. You know, uh, and that's ego. See, that's ego. I'm not willing to give up. That's ego. And, um, Can I make it? Hmm? Yeah. What were you Can I make an observation about this? Sure. That's what the show is about. In my lifetime, in my lifetime, there's only been one president who died while in office. Mm -hmm. He was in his 40s. Yep. Okay. And the person that took over, Lyndon Johnson, did a pretty good job. Oh, yeah. No, Johnson was That's amazing. Great job. It was amazing. Yeah. In fact, he was so, a much better president than Kennedy was. Yeah. Another observation, you know, when when uh, when uh, Obama was running against McCain, they, they wanted him to run against uh, McCain's age and his health. And to Obama's credit, he did. He did not. He didn't bring up uh, McCain's age and health. Now, if John McCain had actually beaten Obama in uh, 2008 and served down a full term mm -hmm. possibly got reelected again in 2012 he could have served out another term and wouldn't have died until after every eight years as president so well, there's a lot we don't know but i will just say one more thing and that is a lot of the stuff against biden is really against kamala harris they do not want kamala harris to be president that's true and it comes down to racism and sexism. Exactly. Well, I don't know like about part. Kamala Harris. Well, what's, well let's, let's put it the other way. What's so good but, about Kamala Harris? I mean, let's not lower our expectations of what we want in a president. There is the, the thing that's scaring people is she's an unknown. Is she good? Is she bad? Maybe she she's black and she, she's black and she's a woman. No, but and, she, and people I, don't I, want I, that. I, I, that's what I, I don't think that's fair. I, I I don't know that you're exactly right, Tom, because we have enough females in politics now, far more mm -hmm. than we ever have, and we have a lot of, of people of racial difference, of you know of race, but, racially. But I you know. still think that's an issue, black and white. Yeah. Do you I, think I, it I what happened that. to Hillary? She was far more qualified to be president. Oh, oh there's no question. She was probably the most qualified person ever to be president. Look at all the jobs. Votes. Huh? She crushed it with votes, too. Let's not forget. I mean, she did win. Her, it, you know, she, she did really well. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, don't like, I don't like Kamala at all. And I don't think it's because she's a woman or black. Well, here, but here's or, here. I don't, she's not even black, right? Or you yeah, know. well, it doesn't it matter. Black. It doesn't matter. They said that about Obama. Well, he's not all yeah. black. Well, no, in, in the South, if you're even an inch black, you're black. You one know. drop. One, all, yeah. one drop. So I mean, it, but it it. Take um, uh, his birth certificate. <laughs> yeah, I just feel that the big problem people are having with uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris is she's an unknown. And uh, they don't feel comfortable with the fact that Biden could die while he's in office. You know, you know he's young in, people really like Kamala. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. And people 30 years and younger. Yeah. 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 I mean, I, I have nothing against her. But the, <laughs> the interesting thing is, I'll tell you, we're about ready to play the theme here. In fact, I'll <laughs> start it up here, although you guys won't hear it. Um, uh, the thing is that. <laughs> Uh, uh, Kamala Harris and uh, 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 your governor out in California, Gavin Newsom, uh, are going to be the two prime people who might be running for president in 2028. And these are two people who are very close, okay? Yeah. They suspect closer than anybody would like to believe, okay? Uh, and that's going to be interesting. Will one of them get out of the way for the other is what the question will be. But anyway, I thank you all for being here tonight. It's been, been a really good hour of discussion. Jeff, thank you so much for being thank here. You. Always nice having you here. Josh, always very smart. Uh, Tom, you should call more often. You add nicely to the, to the group. I will. And uh, you may yeah. notice there are a few people, people that are not here, 
that really don't aren't here anymore. So you, the coast is clear to get your point across. You know. Uh, uh, also, uh, thanks to uh, Alan. We appreciate it. Kevin, thank you. Ryan Sigmund, always nice to have you here. And uh, finally, of course, Charlie Wallace. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. There'll be another one forming right after this program on the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop. You can call him using Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, we'll be back again on Monday on uh, Facebook uh, with the pop up show at 4 o'clock in the East. And uh, then again next, uh, let's see, Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.